Hey, hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Thanks for tuning in to our Lay Moon Facebook Live. Today's interview is going to be a little bit more unique from our last few. We've been interviewing gynecologists, doctors, fertility specialists to hear their thoughts on vaginal steaming. But today, we're going to focus more on what we're calling steam stories from around the world, interviewing real women who practice vaginal steaming and just getting the scoop on their personal experience integrating bee steaming into their lives. So this evening, I'll be speaking with Andrea or Andy Varela, who's a yogi based in New Mexico, right? Yes. Yes, and yeah, we saw your YouTube video called My Yoni Steam Made Me Cry, and we definitely wanted to hear more, so thanks for joining Yeah, us. of course. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Um, so let's start off by just learning a little bit more about you. You're based in New Mexico. Are you from there originally? Yeah, so I was born and raised here in New Mexico in a little town in New Mexico. And then I recently moved to the city, not recently, but about five years ago, I moved to the city. Um, so I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm a yoga instructor here. I'm a 500 hour yoga instructor. I just got certified for my 300 hour in Costa Rica. And I was there for about seven weeks this summer. It was so beautiful. It was really a really great experience. Um, and then I'm also a, um, I guess it would just be like an energy worker. I'm certified in Reiki. So I got certified in that last year. So I do energy healings as well. And I work with plant medicine. And I'm just kind of like this, just everything. I do a little bit of everything. Um, and so, <clears throat> yeah, I've been doing Yoni Steams for, I want to say like at least seven to eight months now. Um, and not every month, but I definitely spread it out. And, and I had a friend that introduced me to Yoni Steaming. And so that's kind of been my journey as of this last year has been with plants and plant medicine. So how did your friend introduce you to it? Was it something that she learned from another woman or was it passed down through her family? She actually makes yoni steams um, from a lot of the herbs here in New Mexico. She's been gathering herbs from New Mexico, um, I'd say, for a few years now and has been um, shipping yoni steams out. Um, I think that she has a pretty pretty decent following on Twitter. And so she um, has kind of been just sending them out to people using her own herbs. She goes and she harvests. And so she's been a really big inspiration as far as my yoni steam journey. journey. Great. So mm -hmm. when you first heard about it from her... Were you at a workshop with her or was she at a yoga class or were you out for coffee? Or do you remember the moment that she first started telling you about it or that you discovered her? Yeah. Um, so she's my best friend. So we were just like hanging out and she was telling me that um, that she works with Yoni Steams. And I was kind of curious. I hadn't heard about what that was. And so I asked her what it was and she kind of gave me the benefits and like the rundown and told me like the different herbs that she personally uses. I know that it's kind of customizable. Um, and so she introduced me to a few different herbs that she puts in most of her steams, if not all of her steams. Um, and then she just kind of intuitively chooses different herbs for um, certain people. And um, if somebody has like a certain intention that they're using she usually likes to find an herb that works with them um and so it's just kind of something that she's been doing in order to she's an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um and so she's kind of been just doing that over the last few years to kind of make a little bit of income and to educate women on uni steaming as well so when you first heard her talk about it did you find it strange or did it immediately just attract you as something you want to try or a little bit of both probably yeah I feel like strange <laughs> things kind of attract me so I was like whoa that sounds weird but I definitely want to try that so I was really excited to to do it for my first time and then um after that I started making my own and just kind of experimenting with my own and I just kind of got into really loving it um I'm like a very like spiritual person. So I used it more for like the spiritual benefits and I mean it was great all of the physical benefits that come with it as well um, so the very first time that you steamed then, were, were, was your intention more based in kind of personal growth that, rather than like physical aspects of the benefits of steaming? Mm. The first time that I steamed, um, it was after a full moon. It was charged with a full moon and I had just gone out of not just gone out of a relationship, but I was healing wounds from a previous relationship. And so I really just kind of wanted to clear all the energy out of my womb space from that. So that was kind of my intention with my first steam was to really just kind of see what came up from it. Um, and also with the intention of healing whatever was stored in there that kind of didn't really need to be stored there anymore. And so then during the steam, or maybe you can walk us a little bit through yeah. like what your practice is like in your home, because I'm assuming mm -hmm. you're doing this at home using your own kind of 
DIY yes. team feet action. Yeah. Um, so she told me to like try and find a Yoni throne, um, but I wasn't, I hadn't really like practice it enough to really want to like invest super hard in it um and so I just did it in a toilet so what I did was um while everything was kind of boiling like I just kind of brewed everything like a tea um and I had like meditated over it I was chanting over it um and then I went to the bathroom and I just kind of cleared space she told me that it was really important to set a space and to really like sit in that space have an intention so I went to my bathroom and I lit some sage I lit some incense and I really just created a very sacred space I put on some really um healing music just um I think it was like some Native American music that just kind of had all these chimes and these drums and um, just very instrumental. And so I created that space um, and then I kind of cleaned my toilet a little bit with vinegar and lemon and um, I flushed that down and then um, I went ahead and I put the put the tea in there essentially. Um, and so I put that in the toilet and then I took a blanket and I covered my legs with the blanket and I just sat over the steam. Um, and then I just meditated for, it was like 45 minutes that I was in there. Um, and I just kind of like let anything that was kind of coming up, come up. I had a, a pretty big emotional release from my first one. Um, and it like kind of invoked some feelings that I hadn't really felt in a long time as far as like anger, sadness, um, just kind of going through some traumatic experiences that I've experienced in my life and just watching those come up and just watching how my mind um, observed those things that was coming up and just kind of allowed myself to feel all of the emotions that I hadn't felt for certain things. And, um, and yeah, I, I noticed physically that it really helped me regulate my period as far as like syncing up with the moon. I hadn't, like I was kind of synced up with the moon for a while there. And then um, I took a trip to Sedona and when I came back from that trip, my period was kind of off. And so it was like in transition between new and full moon. Um, and so I noticed that it linked me back up to the moon, which was, which was really interesting. So now in practice, do you have a certain time of the month that you do it ritually or does it kind of vary depending on when you're feeling or what your schedule is like, or is it always like after or before menstruation? Right. Um, it's definitely usually after menstruation, I've noticed, um, I guess, just kind of intuitively. I never really thought about that. Um, but it definitely does happen after menstruation, um, just because I like to be sure what I'm going to menstruate or when I've already menstruated. So I usually like to do it after menstruation. Um, and then I don't really do it every month. I read somewhere that it's like, I don't know if it's not good or like something about doing it every month can actually irritate the skin. Um, so I do it like every three to six months and it's just kind of when I intuitively feel like I need to, like now that I've been back from Costa Rica and I've settled in a little bit now, I know it's like after my next menstrual cycle, I want to clear all of that energy and do another one. I've done about two since I started doing them. So even being an energy worker and having a pretty deep understanding of of what that means. And you can explain a bit more like this idea of release of energy and how vaginal steaming can help facilitate that. I mean, I think even from my own personal experience, just the heat, um, bringing heat to that part of our bodies, like what, what is the significance of that energetic center and, and how is that activated as a release practice? Yeah, so the womb is actually connected to our sacral chakra, and our sacral chakra is the chakra that holds our creativity. It's the chakra that also holds all of our traumas, all of our ancestral healing. Um, same thing with the root chakra. I feel like it kind of does a little bit of work with both. Um, and so when we're energetically healing something, um, we're just giving ourselves the space to really allow ourselves to bring up whatever it is. So in the instance of Yoni steaming, um, just sitting with myself in that meditation and seeing what what kind of comes up and by that what I mean is just like it's like my mind kind of takes me back to certain parts of my life and I'm able to really fully feel all of the emotions that come with that so that's kind of what I see as like an energetic release is like I couldn't feel those things in that moment maybe I couldn't process it maybe there was too much going on maybe this traumatic experience literally made my body freeze up made my nerves freeze up and I couldn't actually process um, the trauma in that moment and so what the steam does is it invites me to go back Back to that space in a different context in a meditation and I can look at it from an objective space and I can actually see okay these are the emotions that kind of tie into that this is how I felt at the time without even really knowing that this is how I felt this is where I lost my power and I didn't say no or I, I um yeah just kind of a loss of power um and sometimes some things aren't really like 
um, like sexual trauma or anything. Sometimes it's just trauma that we've experienced. I had one scene where a lot of inner child things came up and I noticed where, um, where I could have stepped up more in my own voice as even just a kid or an adolescent and noticed that a lot of trauma kind of affected me and my body like growing up. And there was a lot of times where I felt anger and I felt sadness and I didn't really have a healthy way of expressing that. And so I feel like in this objective space, I can really like do that. And I can really feel all of the emotions that come up with that. So that's kind of like what I feel like an, um, an energetic release would be. Definitely. Yeah. Great. And I think it's such a benefit to be able to have this practice uh, and do this in your own home where you kind of feel empowered to set the stage for what you want that to feel like and be like and that it is yeah. a safe space and that it's really personal work that you're doing. I think it's really great and well described. Um, so do, would you have a meditation practice outside of steaming? I'm assuming you do because I'm you do more than just every three to six months. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a pretty solid meditation practice. Um, I was doing a little bit more meditation when I was in Costa Rica. And then when I got back, it was just kind of like adjusting um, back into like my lifestyle and back into everything that I was doing before. But I set a pretty good um, foundation for a meditation practice while I was out in Costa Rica. And I've kept up with um, tuning into my breath and really um, playing with the idea that every moment can be a meditation. And so I find that during my day, there are at least 10 to 15 minutes that I really just sit with myself and tune into myself and see how I'm feeling, see how my body's feeling. And what I've noticed is that the more micro that you can get the feelings, um, the kind of deeper that you can come into yourself. And by that, it's like, if somebody asks me, how are you feeling? And I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine instead of doing that, just taking a moment to really feel into myself and say, oh, I feel this heaviness in my chest. I feel like I'm going through something. I'm not really sure what it is. I feel like my body's kind of tight. Just really getting micro with um, things like that can really help you actually figure out what it is that you're really feeling. And so I feel like meditation has really brought me into that space of being able to tune into myself, being able to tune into my body. So then with vaginal steaming, where it's more focused on the womb space and the core of your female body um do you see that as an enhanced version of meditation or in other words kind of is it supplementing your meditation practice or does it have a totally different function for you um no definitely it enhances my meditation practice immensely i think because the herbs are being used in that and um as women, our wombs are literally portals of creation, whether it's birthing a child or birthing a new idea or birthing a new art project or birthing a new opportunity, um, that is our space of creation. And so when there are things that are blocking that, when we remove those, we really sit with those, it really brings you into kind of like a deeper trance, especially because herbs are involved. Um, and I kind of noticed that the intention that I put into a steam is exactly what I experience through um, through vaginal steaming. And so sometimes I don't like to put an intention and I like to just see what comes up. But I've noticed that when I do put an intention, the energy absolutely follows that. And I can feel um, whatever the intention is that I put into that. So it definitely enhances the meditation a lot more, especially if it's something that I'm seeking to let go of or something that I'm seeking to experience. And are you just experiencing that release on an energetic level or have you also noticed, I mean, you were saying that your menstrual cycle is starting to sync up more with the moon by integrating this practice, but also just in terms of making it more regular or your periods, you know, more standard four days and just easier on your body in any way. Um, so I definitely have always had like a pretty regular period. Um, I go for about five days, like my first two days are the hardest. My last three days are just kind of like spotting from here and there. Um, so I've been pretty regular as far as my period. So the biggest thing that I've noticed was myself sinking back up to the moon. Um, but as far as like physical benefits, I feel like I used to get a lot of irritation down in that area. And now I've noticed it a lot less, especially like when I put rose or like chamomile, very like soothing um, herbs with that. I notice a pretty big difference if I'm having like symptoms of like UTIs or if I'm going or if I've just had a UTI um, or if I'm feeling irritation or anything like that. Um, I feel like it also kind of changes the consistency of the fluids as well. Um, and it really kind of falls into the four phases of menstruation. So like the follicular phase is a little bit different as far as the fluid than any other phases. And like I've noticed that it's really um, 
yeah, it's really just kind of linked itself back up to where it should be as far as like what the fluid should be when you're in your follicular phase and what it should be when you're in your menstrual phase and things like that. So I've definitely noticed that the fluid and the um, odor has kind of changed as well or the irritation. And I know earlier you were mentioning your friend that that curates different steams for her clients and um, that she uses local herbs around your area in New Mexico. Which herbs are you using most frequently? Or you mentioned chamomile and rose. Are there any others that she recommends or that you've experienced and worked with? Definitely. Um, so rose is one that she collects. She also collects um, yarrow and mullein. And there's one more that she always uses. No, I feel mugwort is a very popular one that I've okay with or artemisia but that's a that's used mostly in the korean tradition of vaginal steaming it's like the main herb but oh oregano that's another one oh, here oh oregano yes that's also very big like cleansing clearing herb but oh, here yeah. in the northeast where i am mugwort grows like wildfire it's everywhere that's awesome. so I'm just curious. So that's easy and abundant there it means something i'm convinced yeah um, but yeah, I think that's also a great aspect of it too, is like, it can be so simple in terms of, you know, going out into your, you know, lo hyper local nature and seeing what's available to you. And so many of these plants are trying to speak to us. And even if we're just using them in the steam for aroma therapeutic reasons and not for the medicinal properties of the herbs, that in and of itself helps induce this more emotional release, I think, for the for the meditation. So I think that's a great aspect that you touched on mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. I feel like with um, local herbs to your area, especially if you've grown up in the area, it can also enhance a little bit of like ancestral healing too, I've noticed, um, especially like growing up in New Mexico and then using the herbs of New Mexico. Um, there can be a lot of ancestral healing. And I know that she kind of only uses those specific herbs after harvest and then during the winter like after she kind of runs out we have a local herb store that has pretty much everything local yeah no, that's that's really great i know yeah. there's so many people making different blends now and i feel like mm -hmm. it's only on the rise but it's not that it's a new thing it really yeah. is an ancient practice and i think anyone that comes into contact with it through word of mouth or tries it in the same way that you did immediately feels like oh i'm home like this is a very yeah. important way of connecting to myself that I didn't realize was available to me. And even as someone too who has really regular periods and isn't dealing with something like very debilitating in terms of EMS, it still is such a powerful tool to just, yeah, let go of, of so much of that tightness that we hold. It's protection really too. And even what you were mentioning, this womb, and sacral chakra is really about home and protection and to be able to feel safe there is really important. So the more that we can kind of like meditate on that spot, I think it's just, yeah, really great. So I'm glad to hear that your practice is serving you in that way. It's really Definitely. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I know also a lot of women are, at least on the East Coast, I think in LA too, certain spas are offering this as a treatment as well, which I think yeah. is like, really interesting juxtaposition of like being able to do this at home or even like in a circle of women at a group workshop or go to a spa and pay like a hundred dollars to have it be more of like a pampered right experience mm -hmm. whatever gets you there but I'm curious yeah. if you have any thoughts on that or if you've tried steaming in a spa or any yeah. different situation besides just at home I've never tried steaming in the spa. I feel like that would be kind of interesting. Um, I'm just so like hypersensitive that I, I would definitely have to like treat the space like it's my space and like clear it and do um, like the energy work beforehand. Um, but I definitely think that that'd be kind of cool and something to look into. Absolutely. Like you said, anything that gets you there. These are like these ancient techniques that we're now bringing back. And so it's like a lot of people experience this or feel like this is new, but exactly what you said when you do it it's like a homecoming like you're like no I've been doing this and that's what I mean by ancestral healing right it's like no I've been doing this for a really long time I didn't know and now I'm here again you know I think that's so true and even just having that space to release stress and tension which seem to be like some of the root causes of a lot of 
female health problems. Yeah. Like this mind body connection is so real. And I think sometimes we try to be so hyper scientific about it, but I think it always comes full circle kind of back to like your inner knowing and ability mm -hmm. to communicate with your body and yeah. understand what it's trying to say to you. Like I even think cramps, like that's what cramps are. It's kind of your uterus working, yes, to shed your lining, but but it also has a voice that I think vaginal steaming allows you to really like listen in to what that's saying. And I think it seems like from your YouTube video that you published, like that was so real for you and just feeling like this major emotional release in terms of even just crying tears and yeah. joy that you were able to get there with yourself. So totally. awesome. Yeah, and I definitely think that it gave me like that intuition to tap back into myself. Um, and I learned in my yoga school this month, they have like this acronym for pain as far as like cramps and it was like pay attention inward now. And I really like that um, because, you know, we're really not supposed to experience like super heavy cramping the way that we do um, in our world today. And I think a lot of it just has to do with like our society and we're so go, 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 especially with females trying to say, oh, like I can do anything a man can do. And like in reality, like, yes, we can. Absolutely. And how can we bring an intuitive way to that? How can we bring a more open way to that? Um, because I feel like obviously there's biological differences, but as women, I feel like for whatever reason, maybe it is because we have a womb, maybe it is because we menstruate, we have a deeper connection with our bodies because of that. And so I think that sometimes this can be lost and because we're trying to go and go and go in this society and trying to keep up with you know, the grind, we forget to take that time to really tune into ourselves. And in other countries, like they have days off that they can just menstruate and be with themselves. And we don't have that here. And so I think that we're just trying to keep up in this. Um, I don't really want to go to like patriarchic, but I mean, patriarchic worlds where everything is just go, go, go. Everything is business. And so um, I really think that it's powerful when you can take that power back and take that time for yourself to really tune into what it is that your body is saying because you know it, it really is intuitive and I think that as humans we're always trying to find a label for things we're always trying to find a logical and scientific way that things are the way that they are when in reality if we had no words if we had no way of being able to speak we'd be the mammals that we really are and we'd have nothing but intuition to rely on yeah so much so and I mean it all comes in cycles too like those moments where you do have to kind of embody more of the masculine right and be more of the hammer that you were describing where you have all these like tasks that you have to hit but there will be a moment in your in your cycle where you need rest and you need to kind of go back inward and really reflect on like you know what it is that you've taken on during the month and what it is that you need to release so that you can rejuvenate refresh and start again and and go back and be more creative and productive person in the world but just like the moon you know the full moon is kind of when you're supposed to be at like the epic pinnacle of your creative force right and, and for most women that's that's when you're ovulating as well you know and then then you menstruate and it's kind of more insular and like you're right we don't really have a society set up to to allow us to take those like slower paced times right. but it doesn't mean that we can't create them for ourselves we just have Absolutely. to create proactive about making that space and the way that you've been doing it at home like using your own toilet like everyone mm -hmm. well, the most privileged people I guess have a toilet I shouldn't say everyone right. but but it, it can be that simple and, right. and it, you can even take like 20 minutes you know just to really sink in and, and give yourself that space and time on your Absolutely. own terms. Absolutely. I totally agree. Because it does very much work in like a cycle. And the more that you can kind of take this time to, yes, let your outward energy show like in your fertile stage, or in even in ovulation, you can have that outward energy, but it, it t comes time where everything's raining in right before menstruation. And you really have to take that time to sit with yourself and go inward. And it's so important, like you said, just to see what we've taken on, and what we really can let go of. And, um, I think that women who menstruate during the full moon, um, I don't necessarily think that they're off. Like I've read some like articles that are like, oh, they're off. And I don't necessarily think that. I think what the full moon is doing is shining a light on that inner period of darkness, that inner period of going back into introspection. Whereas if you're menstruating during the new moon, then you just have that darkness and you really have that period of integration and introspection and it can really be beautiful and it can also be really beautiful to shine a light on that if you're not paying so much attention during the other spaces of your cycle 
Yeah, definitely. I, I actually menstruate on the full moon, so I'm kind of in what is considered like the opposite phase, but uh-huh. I'm, it's also considered the witchy, shamanic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the healer phase. I'm like, I'll that makes it. sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, it's amazing how universal some of these concepts are, the more people we talk to about it. And for so long, you know, talking about your period is like, hyper taboo so it's great to be able to connect with you know people through social media and realize oh like I'm feeling this way too aren't you and and once yeah we shine light on those patterns together we can start to reintegrate all these practices to help us you know feed off of them even more and make us more empowered um people in the world spirit in the world really it's kind of like your soul's voice it's just looking to like express itself in the most vibrant way possible and I think these practices are really helpful for that especially as women I feel like we feel so alienated sometimes because we go through this cycle of menstruation and we go through issues with our just that space in general that it can kind of be awkward to talk about it can be awkward to talk about your period it can be awkward to talk about an odor or something that's going on that you're not really sure what it is we're not really taught to talk about it it's just like don't talk about it just it's not seen it's not heard and so um that's really why i've liked going to like women's circles and stuff and so i'm actually hosting women's circle here on the next full moon um in new mexico and we're doing it's all about like yoni steam and it's all about like the four phases of menstruation and how you can link up to the moon and then um they'll be making their own yoni steam at the end of that so i'm really excited to lead something like that and incorporate all aspects of the cycle oh that's awesome when is that is it on- uh the 24th so on monday yes the full moon yeah yeah, I'm going to blast that out there too, because yeah. that's actually how I learned about vaginal steaming myself was at a women's circle on summer solstice, I think two summers ago now, uh-huh. where the leader of the circle started talking about yoni steaming and had each of us make our own little like sachet of herbs at the end. And that was the first time I had tried it or even heard of the concept. And yeah. I think learning about it in circle too is so great because everyone's already in this like hyper vulnerable place. and we're all sharing information about how to kind of, yeah, heal ourselves and, mm-hmm. and find more avenues of you know, self-care that you get so much of from being in circle, but also we kind of still have like our own inner circle of being mm-hmm. inside of this body and, and how to better nourish it. So I'm Absolutely. so glad you're doing that over there too. Yeah, I'm really excited. Have you hosted that type of circle before? With not with yoni steams i host women's circles um and then i just hosted a cacao ceremony last week um and yeah it's just super powerful i love being able to gather with women that's like definitely what i feel like one of my souls calling is is to definitely just gather with women allow them to be vulnerable give them a space where they feel like they can be open and share um also with like that confidentiality of like this isn't going to leave the space so whatever it is that needs to come up for you and needs to come through for you here you have the space to do that Um, But I definitely don't think that Yoni Steaming will be the last time that I incorporate that into my space. It's it's something new and I'm excited to try it and see the reactions and and take that as like a workshop somewhere else um, in different states. Are the women that attend your circles typically is it the same group or are you always kind of pulling in people from different walks of life? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm a very versatile person. So I just pull a bunch of different people from all walks of life. There are some that are pretty consistent in coming and they're the people that are already kind of integrated in this type of community. Um, And there are also really beautiful souls who come in that have never experienced anything like that. So it's a good mixture of both. That's great. So when you explain to them what vaginal steaming is and have them select their herbs, um, have other women there do you think that they've done this before it will be you're introducing it to them for the first time I think a lot of them it'll be the first time introducing it to them that's really yeah mm-hmm. yeah so um, my best friend the one that I was talking about she and I are going to be hosting this together and she will be talking about like the history of Yoni steam and she'll be going over all of the herbs and then we'll just kind of have them intuitively um, feel like whichever ones that they need for their steam they can kind of make into their own little steam and then they can take take a steam home with them and, and share their experiences with us, hopefully in the next circle. Uh, and are you guys working with dried herbs primarily or do you bring fresh herbs as well? Dried herbs, she's dried all of the herbs out. Um, and then we'll be taking a few more from our local store that we've got around us as well. Um, so everything will be dried. 
Well, thanks, Andy. This is great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't have any more questions for you. If there's anything more you want to share with us, I'm happy to listen. Yeah. Um, any parting words of female wisdom and empowerment on our fall equinox? Yeah, I just feel like it's so important to tune into the body. And it's so important to take that power back where we've lost it and we've, you know, tried to adapt to this world when really we don't have to. And it's okay to make our own space. It's okay to make our own rituals. It's okay to tap back into this um, ability that we have to really tune into ourselves and tune into our own cycles and tap into the cycles of the earth. They very much reflect our own inner cycles. And so I think that the more that we can take our power back and being able to do that, the more that we can kind of collectively come together and start to do that and maybe teach the men how to do the same thing, living with the earth and how important that is. Because I definitely think it's an ancient tradition that has been lost. And I think it's something that we're slowly starting to find again. So I definitely think that it's so empowering and it's so empowering to be able to say, I feel this way and I've, I've done this steam and I've taken this part back of myself, you know, this trauma that I've been living with for so long, it's finally been healed. Um, and so how powerful can that be? Yeah, and even to witness that for yourself, you know, like with, and you be the solo witness of, of that act is just such an amazing thing to make space for. So thank you for articulating that so well. and. I very much look forward to keeping in touch about your circles and about all the work that you're doing, really. It's perfectly aligned with what we're doing over here, too. So that's also super encouraging, all the synchronicity between all of us women doing this type of work and men, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be talking soon, I'm sure. Yeah, soon. Thank right. you so much. I really appreciate this. Thanks, Andy. Talk to you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.